<laughs> Hello, Kelly Sutton from Gusto. Hi, Kent Beck from Gusto. We are talking about, what are we talking about today? The Desirable Properties of Tests. Okay. Episode 7. 7. We're going to talk about automated tests. Why automated they should tests. or shouldn't be automated. Yeah. Well, aren't all tests automated? Uh, that's what I thought. And then we were talking, and you you were telling me an old war story. Oh yeah, yeah, stories from the d- deep and dark past. Mm-hmm. When when uh, a release candidate mm-hmm. would come out mm-hmm. every few quarters, yeah, and uh, and then it would be sent to a QA department, okay, and then they would spend months testing it before it those changes went into production. And the test by test, we mean people, actual human beings, poking at the, the application and then looking at results and uh, frowning in a worried way and then mm-hmm. deciding, yes, this is okay. So I call this poke and peek okay. style testing. And was this before or after the transistor was invented? This is a little bit before the Tyrannosaurus Rex invented the transistor. So. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so so there is a, there's a slider here that we're mm-hmm. talking about all the way from... Uh, people manually looking at the results of some computation yeah. all the way to the computer automatically checking the results of the comp- computation giving you a thumbs up thumbs down okay and uh, as with all of these properties there's a there's some continuum mm-hmm. and then there's some this is the uh, hand gesture for a trade-off okay there's some uh, continuum and then there's some cost curves that battle it out to help you figure out where you should land on that continuum. Okay. And in this case, the case of automated testing, I, I think generally the curves are, are kind of flat like this mm-hmm. where I'm going to bias towards automated all of, uh, automating all of my tests if I possibly can. Okay. So let's, so let's, let's dive in. Let's explore that. So on, on one end, we can like hand test our entire app. Yes. Right? And in my, in my head, I'm like, well, that seems enticing because uh, it's really quick to boot up the app and I can click through and I can see that things are okay. Well, and from the, from the very first moment, you mm-hmm. can start doing that. You yeah. can have the, the, uh, the empty app. You can open it up. You say, yep, everything works and mm-hmm. away we go. Mm-hmm. Whereas setting things up for automation is expensive. Yeah. So okay. the more expensive that is, the steeper this curve is the cost that makes it harder and harder to automate yeah and so that's the that's like the nagging voice in the back of my head that says like oh it's gonna be it's gonna take me like an hour to write a test for this right but it's only gonna take me a minute to click through the app right and yeah. sometimes mm-hmm. that is the right trade-off you yeah. say it's a cosmetic change mm-hmm. um it would take me sometimes days to write an automated test because yeah. we're just not set up for writing automated tests yeah yeah, just make the change and get it out there. If okay. it, you know, if it's a small chance of failure, small consequences of failure, that's fine. So that's mm. a that's a case where the the cost of the automation is, mm. is very high and, and the the risks are very low. Yeah. But uh, that's not the default because mm. as soon as uh, let's say I click through, I say, mm. "Yep, this is okay." Yeah. You come to me yep. and you say. I just landed some changes while you were clicking through. Oh, uh, now I have to start over. Yeah, we both asked the question, does the app still work? Right. Yeah. It's like, well, hey, now Kent, you, hey now, Kent, can you go to click through it again? That's right. Now <laughs> we're back t- to zero, and we have this n squared problem where now we have another thing to test and another thing to test, and, mm. another, and we have to go back to the beginning every single time, and mm. that just gets longer and longer. And the more stressful the project is, the worse this problem gets. Mm. Uh, if there's a human in the loop for testing yeah. and people are stressed and they're, they haven't slept well, they're more likely to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. So the more stressful it is, mm-hmm. the more that we need feedback to calm the emotional temperature down, yeah. the less likely we are to get accurate results. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so I'm thinking of like the example where we've got something coming out in an, or we have like a big press push in an hour and our testing loop takes two hours. And you land another change. And I just landed a change, because I'm that guy. Yeah, you are that guy. So <laughs> so uh, this is a trade-off. Now, yeah. to get the cost of the automation down, yeah. that's a software design problem. Mm-hmm. We have to be able to 
at the level of the application as a whole and then within the application we have to be, create interfaces mm -hmm. where there's some a little bit of stuff going in and yep. a little bit of stuff coming out okay and that can be hard to do that's a that's but that's a software design problem that's not a testing problem yeah the the better we hone our design skills mm -hmm. the lower the cost of test automation yeah. the more feedback we get the more design changes we can make mm -hmm. the lower the cost of making further design changes are the more we learn and the better it gets so that's why I'm gonna tilt the table towards automation even if sometimes it's a little bit hard gotcha gotcha so I should automate my test so I don't have to send you a slack message saying hey Kent can you click through the app just one more time Just one more time yeah yeah. because you don't know you won't you don't want to know what I say at that moment <laughs> so there you have it we've got a uh, uh, Test should be automated as a desirable property and a little bit about the trade-offs involved. Great.